Good evening, everyone. My name is Abhishek Jain, and I'm pleased to invite you all to the first episode of the LLM series by Plante. Towards the end of this session, we will also be having a Q&A session for which I would request you all to put your questions in the live chat box. Today, we are very fortunate to have with us Ravina Sethia, a graduate of the Jindal Global Law School with a silver medal in academics. She then went on to pursue her LLM from the University of Cambridge and is also the recipient of the Justice Pratiba M. Singh Scholarship and the Wolfson College Scholarship. She currently works with a competition law practice at Shardul Amatan Mangaldas New Delhi, or SAM. In this session, Ravina will be speaking in detail on the application process as well as the opportunities available after completing an LLM from the University of Cambridge. I would now like to hand it over to Ravina to begin the session. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Ravina. And just to give you a, a sort of more uh, brief background about myself, so you know my trajectory of how I went for my LLM. Um, so I went to Jindal, as he said, for five years. I did my BA LLB. Uh, while there, I got a um, I got a PPO with Trilegal, and um, I had accepted that job offer. And then I thought, let me apply for LLMs. Let me try my luck. And uh, I applied only to Oxford and Cambridge. Um, I got into Cambridge. Oxford was still waitlisted. I wasn't quite sure. And, um, you know, I thought, let me wait it out and see what happens. And then I got selected for the Pratipa Singh and Wolfson College Scholarship, which is under the Cambridge Trust. So I decided to pursue it, except before I went, because um, the LLM terms start in September, October and college ends in May. I thought I should go to try legal. So I did go there and work for a couple of months before I went uh, for my LLM. And while I was there, I did a vacation scheme with Herbert Smith Freehills, which is one of, uh, um, it's not a magic circle firm, but it's one of the bigger firms in the UK. And after doing that um, VAC scheme, I was offered a training contract, which I accepted in the interim. And uh, then I thought to myself that my opportunities are better back in India. So I came back and since then I've been working at the competition practice at SAM. So this is sort of briefly my trajectory. And I thought today I would answer questions broadly on why I thought I should go for an LLM or why anyone should, why I applied to Cambridge, um, how did I really apply, what is it like there, what do you do in terms of scholarships and broadly give you a brief overview of life there and things there that you would not normally get, um, you know, on when you search on Google or Quora or, you know, unless you actually speak to someone who's had that experience. So I hope this is helpful for everybody. Uh, so to begin with, why I did an LLM. Um, so I, my background is purely, was mostly in corporate laws and IP laws. Most of my internships were with corporate firms. Um, and I thought if I do the LLM and I focus on corporate subjects, my employability would be higher. I would be considered more specialized. I would have a greater working knowledge cross jurisdictionally about subjects that I was interested in. And I already had a basin. So that's one of the reasons. The second reason uh, is a reason a lot of students adopt is that, you know, you have to work all your life. You might as well be a student a little bit longer, live that student experience for another couple of months. Thirdly, uh, to probably meet people from across the world. I think in Indian universities, our interaction and exchange with people from different jurisdictions is quite limited. Although where I went, we had higher exposure than other law schools here. Uh, so I wanted to build on that. I wanted to explore people, opportunities and, you know, build relationships across jurisdictionally. And the LLM is a great way to do that because a lot of people coming for LLMs usually have a little bit of work ex, um, at least from other jurisdictions, especially European and American countries. And therefore, they become great contacts in the future to build relationships with in, in various streams, uh, either ac academically or even in terms of work exchange in the future. So these were broadly my three reasons for applying. Uh, now, why I applied to Cambridge, um, it's obviously one of the oldest and most recognized universities in the world and one of the best universities in the UK itself. 
um cambridge offers a lot of the corporate subjects that i wanted to do um for example there are there is corporate law there is ip law there is international ip um competition law um and there are also a broad range of international law subjects and a broad range of law and socio political subjects of sorts i took one called the birth development and afterlife of states which was actually not very legal honestly it was quite uh, an it was quite a combination of history and political science and economics to some extent to understand the trajectories of different um, jurisdictions and how countries and nations came to be about so i applied because i thought i could have a wide range of courses i would be able to specialize yet be able to do at least one course out of pure interest um another reason why I, i applied to cambridge is because a lot of alumni from my university had already been there they had had a great uh, time in terms of their academic uh, uh, acumen and they also got a lot of opportunities afterward so based on their experience and feedback i thought this would be best fit for me um so these are purely the reasons why i applied to cambridge a little bit about the college uh, university is that it has 31 different colleges um most llm students from south asian countries usually are allotted wolfson college or hughes hall some are even allotted uh, st edmunds uh, very few go to colleges like girton and homerton because they're a little far from the academic law academic block um but you meet a lot of people through your colleges and where you sort of stay and um you know that sort of builds your social life although in the llm courses your classes are with people who are in different colleges um you know across the town and uh, while you don't get to see them when you come back to your dorm room you do form bonds and you can interact with them uh, during class hours or for lunches and there are different conferences and events that are planned every week or alternate week um, that you know is for a particular specialized area so you can always interact more there um cambridge also has a very nice culture in terms of um you know opportunities social opportunities for people to meet and interact which i think is very important when you're coming from a different country where you don't have any idea about um the socio cultural fabric and you want to meet new people and explore things together so the college where i was at wolfson um it had a great culture in terms of they would do stand up comedy shows uh, they would have these uh, like every other college they would have these bops which were these sort of social parties every fortnight um you know these would be in different different colleges and each college would have it once in a while so these platforms became a great way for us to build our friendships and you know let our hair down after uh, studying and after you know grilling academic courses um so that's that now in terms of how i applied um so cambridge is a very straightforward application process and like most universities in the uk it is academic heavy so you are uh, you have to give two references at least this was the situation when i applied the sop was a very short 500 word sop which you had to type out within the form itself um you also have there's a greater focus on your grades and you know they will take per subject numbers and grades for you and they also give you space to fill out work experience and space to fill out any mitigating circumstances or any other possible explanation you want to give now the same application form also has a place where you can fill details of whether you want to apply for a scholarship which is within the cambridge trust because within the cambridge trust it's the same form which sort of shortlists you for different scholarships now if you are planning to tick yes and i'm sure most people in india do want to at least have the chance of having a scholarship uh it's important that you research and see which scholarships fall within the cambridge trust bracket see which ones you are eligible for there are some like shevning for example uh, or gates uh, for example which have a prerequisite work ex criteria so it would be foolish for a person straight out of law school to apply just tick mark that scholarship without realizing whether they are eligible for it or not so importantly look at the different scholarships what you are eligible for what you are not the one that i received was uh, for people who had a background in ip laws so you know if someone would have tick marked on that without having any background on ip law they would have you know therefore lost an opportunity to be considered for a worthy scholarship um for somebody which would have been reserved therefore for someone else 
um so look at the criteria tick mark what you think would be more applicable for you and there is a space there which allows you to put forth details of why you think you are eligible for that scholarship so in this space it's important to write what beyond what you've written for your sop and i'll get to your sop in a bit also um but write beyond your sop write specifically why your experience would be beneficial for that scholarship why you would be the best candidate why that scholarship would enrich you in your future endeavor if you do that your chances of being selected at least for an interview round become much higher and a mistake a lot of people make from what i can understand in terms of feedback i've gotten in the last 3 years is that they will repeat a generic introduction of themselves which people can already gather from their application form so do not do that uh, write specifically why you require a scholarship and why you're particularly eligible for those scholarships that are listed out there now coming to references before sops um as i said cambridge is a very academic heavy institution and it at that point at least allowed only two references if it's more right now then you can obviously um you know customize this advice to whatever suits you um but if it is still to references i would recommend going more for academic references and especially from professors whom you already have a rapport with that would really help because um those professors would be able to reflect on your academic acumen maybe provide examples of how your academic acumen has been displayed in their classes how you've been able to um, take what has been learned as a concept and actually apply yourself to it and therefore probably be able to present you as a better candidate for that llm program in total um a mistake a lot of people make is they go for someone who has a higher name or they go for someone whom they don't know very well but they know probably gives a lot of recommendations um you know that may be good in some circumstances but where a college is very heavy on academic recommendations it's better to at least approach one person whom you have a better or deeper academic rapport with um so do keep that in mind now coming to sops um so the cambridge sop is very short at least in our time it was very short i don't think it was more than 500 words um a common mistake a lot of people make while writing sops is that they repeat their general uh, profile you know they will repeat their grades they will repeat their college they will repeat their school these things are already mentioned in your application so you are simply wasting a very limited amount of words purely repeating things which will not help you in any aspect whatsoever instead it's better to uh, focus your sop on why you're doing this course why you want to come to this particular university and how will this experience benefit you in the future i think if you answer these three questions in your sop your sop automatically is more enriched and it's stronger towards that particular college don't copy paste ideally an sop that you're using for all universities because you know any reviewer can see through that very very easily and it reduces your chances of making a very good first impression so use that space think wisely it's just 500 words but answer these three questions and it will help you stand out in terms of your application um moving on from here i thought i'd reflect a little bit on scholarships uh, broadly so um you can apply for various scholarships to study in the uk there are some scholarships that are in a partnership with the ministry um and you can apply for those through the ministry's portal uh separately there are all these cambridge trust scholarships that you can automatically be considered for as part of your application process you can also apply for different scholarships which are under uh, there's one for the oxford and cambridge society there's one by a bombay society there is one by narottam sekseria uh, and there is one by tata trust as well uh, these are some of them that are obviously a lot more um, but it's important for each of these scholarships that you understand the terms and conditions before applying several of these scholarships work like loans interest free loans where the scholarship grant is awarded to you today but you are required to return that money two or three years upon returning from your llm so keep that in mind while you are applying keep that in mind in terms of return of funds etc at least cambridge trust uh, you don't have to do that for many scholarships at least the one i have is a full free grant 
you do, do not i do not have to return any amount so that really helped me in terms of my financial ability to be able to pursue this course and be able to um, be able to make the most of that experience without burdening myself or anyone else in my family but a lot of people did also take um opt for scholarships under tata trust or other uh, scholarships where they had to return the fund and it's always uh, the return is always in in a 10% 50% sort of scale year by year so you don't have to return it in one go it can be returned in different tranches and they plan their finances in such a way that they would be able to do this without hesitation when they return so do that financial planning before you apply and while you're there and especially on your return so that you don't miss any deadlines and you're able to um, make the most of your experience and plan your finances well um i think apart from this i thought i would probably um discuss life at uh, cambridge life in the uk and what are the opportunities out there in terms of uh, being able to apply and in terms of being able to uh, do after your llm is over so i think when you come to cambridge um the university tries its best to make you feel welcome there are many social events that are organized for you to get to know each other if you are a recipient of a scholarship that scholarship grant or trust would be able to also um help you interact with different scholars uh, and you build your profile in this manner separately um, the university has multiple societies which you can be involved in uh, one is alternate dispute resolution which is relatively new um, there's international law as well and i think there are some others in the business school which i think law school students can also be allowed to uh, register for so these societies always plan conferences or they have regular meetings and discussion groups which become good platforms and forums for you to be able to interact with other people and build on your academic knowledge as well um another thing you can do while you're at cambridge is participate in moot court uh, activities so cambridge sends a team every year for vis um it sends a team for um i think also the oxford prize media competition and um also for jessa so i think these are the top 3 i don't know if there are any more now but in my year they did send teams for this um and to apply for any of these moot court competitions you have to submit a brief memo of sorts like you would in the real competition and basis that memo that you submit they have oral rounds and then they shortlist the team members so if you get shortlisted you can participate from the university for this competition and represent them uh, when you go uh, and you can go and sort of you know uh, i think they also provide funding so you can also go travel to various places for these competitions and come back um a lot of us did not opt for it because it could become a little hectic with your llm depending on what you're planning to do um for me i did not opt to do a thesis for any of my courses i opted to give examinations for all of them so you have to then therefore study and be um, you know in readings every week and be able to gather and grasp that knowledge um to be able to make the most of your year um but people who were doing thesis uh for them they they had a higher workload but they had greater flexibility in terms of classes in terms of being able to appear and if they were also applying for a moot court competition they did it for a subject where they were already going to do a thesis and probably use that knowledge so that they were not wasting time um you know re-prepping or rewriting some concept because 9 months while it seems long is actually a very very short period to know a course from a different jurisdictions point of view altogether and it is quite reading heavy so it's important that you you know uh, understand from your professors what the course load is going to be whether you will be able to manage before opting to do another extracurricular activity because in that case there are two or three members only and you need to give your all to it um another thing you can do is also uh, join the editorial board of journals they have a cambridge law review and they have an international law journal these two are student run journals the international law journal is only for senior law students um but the cambridge law review is for uh, even uh, llb students and not just llm students so you can opt to be an editor for these uh, journals and you can uh, then therefore review submissions and papers that come in 
and accordingly you will be able to uh, therefore uh, you know have your name on one of these published issues of the journal uh, one other thing that a lot of people did is that they for, they became part of these um, uh, social service uh, society groups of sorts which had partnerships with uh, vidhi and different legal centers uh, in india at the time and they were doing reports and research for different issues um that you know uh, affected different jurisdictions and you know different people in developing countries so that's also an option that you can look at uh, if offered in your year now in terms of the general study pattern at cambridge um cambridge follows a very traditional study model it's not like us universities where there's a lot of interaction between the professor and the student here it's mostly the professor giving you a lecture and you're listening to that lecture and asking questions if and as you have any doubts um so do not come with any illusion that you know it's going to be like what you see in tv shows or in us university tutorial videos etc um it's a very traditional system and that the llm does not have any compulsory um, academic submissions that you need to make during the year so there's no mid term or there's no assignment or anything of that sort there is directly only the end term examination which counts for 100 marks um but in the middle the professors do offer optional papers that you can write optional assignments that you can take which are not graded but they give you feedback based on your performance now as indian students we have a way of writing because of the way we've been taught and uk universities and professors have a very different approach to how a particular answer should be written or a particular point should be presented so i would recommend doing at least one or two of those mock um you know uh, mock assignments and getting feedback from the professor so you are better able to answer the end term paper and therefore get a better score uh, a lot of students in my round also realize that you know even though we had written almost the same or probably more than what someone else had written our scores were not as great because of the style and way of writing and presentation so doing these mock tests will really be able to help you to understand what they're really expecting out of you and therefore give you a best shot during the exam uh the exams are 3 hours long and the timetable can be anything you can have you know six days gap between your exams or you can even have two exams in one day it really depends on the way the examinations are scheduled by the department and you know they can't they're not very flexible in terms of changing dates so it's very very important to be better prepared in advance because you don't know how your examinations are going to be scheduled um the examinations otherwise are like we do here you sit in a classroom you write your paper you give your sheet and you sort of you know then leave um it's nothing very different in that way um but one thing that they do do is that a couple of weeks before the exams they do give you uh, the highest scoring papers from the previous year in your subject so you can get that as a reference point to know how a paper had been answered but there's no guarantee that if you follow the same structure or the same format you will get the same sort of result so that's why i'm saying it's very important to do these mock assignments to know what that professor is expecting out of you this year there are also some courses at least one that was offered in our time uh, which had four or five different professors um, teaching that course uh, it was called advanced private law and different professors would take different modules of the course so in those circumstances it's even more important to do these mock assignments because you don't know at the end of the day which one of them will be correcting your paper so um you know really focus on that learning exercise and self discipline during your 9 months uh, so that you have enough time to be able to be better prepared to answer the paper in terms of faculty cambridge has uh, you know stellar stellar academics they are leaders in their subjects and they are open to discussion they are open to debate um they are open to solving doubts you can always seek an appointment from your professor and go and discuss any topic if you want later sometimes they do have reading circles and groups especially revision circles and groups uh where they do answer specific doubts if you have any if you are opting for the thesis it's important to have a very um flexible i mean it's important to have a supervisor who will really be able to guide you 
so um, research your supervisors in advance you know people who are who are on offer as supervisors in advance and if you have a preference you can always mention that um having a good thesis result it also helps if you want to do a phd in the future or if you want to sort of explore further studies in the future um along with that it's very important to have a good academic record if you want to do your phd from the same university usually a phd offer is made more easily to students who score a first overall uh, rather than those who score a 21 so that brings me to the grading scale so basically you know um cambridge has divisions first division is the highest which is above 70% then there is a 2 colon 1 that's a 2 first um that's the second highest in that you can um i think that's between 60 to 70 or 65 to 75 that's followed by a uh, um 1 2 1 and 1 2 basically they get reversed and then there is a second division so these are broadly and there's a third also but i don't think they give anybody a third uh these are broadly the different scales at which you would be marked um in our experience most indian students get uh, uh the second division of the marks most of them because of i think the writing experience or not being able to have the same um way or knowledge of how to present their paper lose out on the first which is why from our experience we would say uh, really get a hang of how they write and they won their answers now moving on to what you can do once all of this is over and you've studied and the course is over etc uh so one thing you can do in terms of job opportunities uh, is apply for vac schemes and training contracts at different law firms um so a vacation scheme is nothing more it's really like an internship but it has a very very um competitive application to even get that internship you can apply for a vac scheme during your course or even after the course it's a two or three week program where you go to the office of the law firm you work like an intern is working we keep you with a partner mostly you will do research work you'll attend calls etc and at the end of it they will have a short interview with you and they will take feedback from the people you worked with and if they like your work they will offer you a training contract um but the process to apply for a vac scheme is basically um that you need to fill an application form if you're shortlisted based on that they will make you do an assessment test uh if you're good at that then they will have a call with you of telephonic interview if you're good at that also then they will call you for a, a physical um exercise in their office with other shortlisted people and you will do a group exercise and an individual writing exercise and then if you are successful at that you get offered the vac scheme uh i know it sounds like a lot of work but trust me once you're there and you're in a good university already uh, your chances become much better than anybody uh, you know from a different college another thing to keep in mind with vac schemes is that um it's not only a law graduate who can apply you can have a history honors a english uh, uh, um, you know somebody who had english as their major or you know anybody from any field doing a vac scheme uk is very very flexible uh, you know you can uh, in fact qualify as a lawyer even later after completing your legal basic training or while completing your training so remember that your competition is not just from people in other jurisdictions but also people from different fields um but one question people do ask me is whether it makes sense to apply directly for a vac scheme and then getting the training contract or on the other hand applying just for the training contract where you skip all of this internship and everything and you directly apply you fill a longer form you do the same interview process and you directly get that training contract offer and in my experience i would say as indian students it's better to apply for the vac scheme the reason for this is that you know in india our course program already mandates us to do internships so we already know how a legal office functions we already know how to research we already get some drafting experience an experience of how to work in the office with different people and i think if you apply for the vac scheme you have a chance to showcase this experience which a lot of people in england don't do 
the three year law courses that they have don't have any compulsory internship um, you know mandates so those other kids competing with you they would not have the same experience as you do in terms of legal research or writing or being able to interact with people who are your superior or you know doing your deliverable on time so you are at a much better advantage in terms of showcasing yourself and therefore your chance of getting that training contract is much higher so at least in my experience this was a better route uh um, but to each their own if you know you are unable to do the vax scheme or you don't get shortlisted for some reason then do apply for the training contract and see where that goes the other option that you have even though is very rare is a uh, qualifying in the uk and you know being dual qualified then therefore to practice in india and uk and then trying to join a chamber there to do to for a barrister practice um but this course is actually very very difficult because you know chambers don't accept pupils very often the good chambers do it very very rarely um it's very very few people from india who actually get that opportunity but if you're determined if you have this in mind i would encourage you to reach out to some indians who are part of these different chambers in the uk and you know ask them for the application process and what the chances are and then only take a call to do that qualification because getting dual qualified is expensive and also time consuming so you know it's important to know everything around you before sort of jumping into um, you know for that course the next thing you can obviously do is you can come back to india um and you can obviously go for either a law firm like i did or you can go for litigation um people ask me how important is the llm when you return i would say it helps you get into the door but it doesn't help you much beyond that in your day to day functions at least in a law firm this is because law firms have standard templates formats already ready you are giving advice from the perspective of your expertise in indian law and therefore your foreign knowledge may not be very helpful on a day to day basis but yes once in a while for precedents or when you want to take experience of what you studied there and give an option out here um using that experience it becomes very helpful but otherwise the llm is useful to get you a job which would ordinarily be difficult if you just had a ba llb degree it also is helpful if you want to become a research associate or a professor back here and join academics in terms of litigation what i have understood is that courses like restitution and advanced private law really help you think about the common law through in a more multifaceted manner and you are able to understand concepts and their application better because our um, contract law and specific relief act etc is quite modeled on the law in the uk and therefore those concepts may be applied here in some form or the other but then again day to day it may not be that helpful however again in litigation if you want to join a seniors offices or a reputed practitioner it may help you get into the door for sure so i think that's it from me broadly uh, on the llm i hope this is useful i've tried to cover points that you would not ordinarily get uh, you know without actually speaking to someone who's done this course and um, therefore i really hope that it is useful to uh, everybody watching and who will watch in the future and if you do have any questions i'd be really happy to answer Hi Ravina first off thank you i think that was a very very detailed session i think you've covered almost everything that we could actually ask um i just i think to start off i just have uh, one major question which is with respect to a good cv right or what exactly would a cv that would actually get somebody into cambridge look like so uh, could you could you answer this in terms of let's say internships and also gpa Okay so I think in terms of your CV the most important thing would be your GPA if you are applying straight out of law school um but if you are applying with some amount of work ex the work ex work ex sort of supplements for the GPA a little bit um and in terms of a good CV I would say uh, there is no hard and fast rule but it is important to have good grades be able to show at least some form of academic acumen so you could have been a research assistant to a professor or authored a paper or been an editor for a journal or something like that that's important so you know the anybody reviewing your cv will know ki you know this person is not applying for the sake of it they're genuinely interested in academics and their knowledge to grow um 
so that part's important if you can have that tick marked well and good but there's no hard and fast rule there are people without any of this who've also gotten selected um and in terms of internships i would say um it could be anything um because mine were mostly corporate internships not so much litigation or research based and it was not a disadvantage to me but a lot of people who do come and do have a clerkship uh, or they have some internship with a judge usually and they usually take references also from that judge which really helps them so if you are planning in that manner then this would be a good avenue to look at apart from this i think any internship is fine as i said earlier the three year law programs in the uk don't mandate internships so if you have literally anything on your cv you are automatically better placed than you know counterparts from the country at least Okay, I think thanks for that. I think I think my last question is with respect to the SOP, uh, where you had mentioned that it's very important that an applicant focuses on how exactly this particular LLM is going to be useful post, like uh, in the future. So could you could you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I just want to understand that how exactly are we supposed to think about that? Like especially for a student straight out of law school, how exactly do we decide that path? Cool. Okay. So say in law school. Um, you know we are mandated to do 30 or 40 subjects across our five year plan and you develop an interest in three or four subjects uh, one of them for example is ip law the other one may be human rights the other one may be um, international law for instance um, so it's important that wherever you are applying look at the university see what are they offering in your subject interest areas what is the international law offering ip offering or human rights offering in your sop it would be useful to say i was interested in x y z subjects your college offers these these type of courses these are the professors they are luminaries in their field i think i would be really uh, benefited if i could study under their guidance and i want to use this knowledge and maybe come back to india and either you know research in this field or become a professor in this field and having been taught by a professor of this acumen or a course which is so multi jurisdictional or uh, broad based etc would really help me something of that sort but you can keep it broad you can um, focus not only on subjects but also on other interest areas um, that you have that you know university is offering to you in terms of you know even journals where you can be an editor or any other sort of experience or exposure that you want for example my cv um had a little little bit of newspaper article writing experience i mean i won't call it article writing but i used to write a lot of op-eds while i was in college and um, cambridge has a paper called the varsity and i mentioned that in my sop i think uh, you know stating that i want to be part of that team and want to be able to actually do some journalism around campus and use my experience um and writing skills to actually explore how cambridge is and be able to cover pieces there where i'm living now um so this is just one of the examples but you could do it with respect to a course you could do it with respect to any other opportunity that you think the university has to offer all right um, i i think one last follow up that i have to that is when when exactly did you decide that you know you might want to consider let's say applying for an llm itself and also when do you think would ideally be the time for a student to definitely make this decision that okay i want to do an llm straight out of law school i think uh, the applications close in january so if you want to go the same year that you graduate maybe beginning of fifth year or end of fourth year is a good time to finally take that call all right um i i think that's it from my side i don't really have any other questions so once again thanks a lot for taking out the time to come for this session it has truly been an amazing session and it has given a lot of details about let's say anyone who would want to apply for any llm at all so thanks again thank you so much i'm sorry for just my monologue and ranting but i do hope that there are parts of this you can dissect and use for your applications thank you thank you